Small businesses are at the heart of the U.S. economy. Here at Nurture Small Business Podcast, we're dedicated to seeing our small business owners succeed. I am your host, Denise Kagan, president of DCA Virtual Business Support. If you like what you hear on today's podcast, please share it. You have my gratitude for doing so. Hello and welcome to today's show. Today is another solo podcast. This is Denise's Opinions. It is not legal advice, HR advice, financial advice, or any other advice that is regulated under law. It is just my opinion. So today we'll be talking about budgets and forecasts. I hear you groaning. So are you someone, when it comes to a budget, the one who wings it? meaning you wait until you've had an expense and then you enter it into your budget. Sometimes you look at your bank account to see if the money is there for a specific purchase you want to make. Then at the end of the month, you tally up all your expenditures, okay? Or are you the person that plans, meaning you've got an idea of what you spend and you put it on some type of tracking document, a spreadsheet or something else, and then you try to stay in those lines that you've drawn, okay? You may possibly even over plan a little bit, you know, being very specific about each line item, but not using categories to help you create a a more useful budget. Then you might be the person who does no planning at all, okay, and simply spends. Then wonder at the end of the month or at the end of the year why you're not able to pay yourself like a CEO or president of your own company. So being a business owner comes with a lot of flexibilities and freedoms, but it also comes with a lot of things that you would not have to do if you were an employee of another company. For instance, you're responsible for all of the planning in your business. I don't mean just the board budget and forecast, but you're in there. You have to plan hiring, firing, client uh, attrition, client retention, quiet client acquisition. So we're going to zero in, and they're all related to some degree. We're going to zero in on your budget and forecast. So the budget is intrinsically different from the forecast, though. It is very closely connected. They're cousins, okay? And they must connect with your sales goals and sales activities in order for you to take your budget and meet your forecast. Otherwise, you may not be able to achieve what you envision. Are you with me? I'm sure that all of you going into this new year, 2024, we're only a couple weeks in, I have at least have written down or made goals or at least have it in your mind of what you would like to accomplish in this year. It might be related to your income or profitability. Maybe your goals relate to the number of clients you want to attract and and, and um, bring into your company, which is also something that supports your financial goals. Maybe it's about growth related to how many employees you may want to have, which again, you would need to have the sales and clients to support it for the most part. Uh, So let's start off with what is the difference between a budget and a forecast? All right, in a nutshell, a budget is pulling together of data from your past, such as expenses and income. Your expenses might include some things like subscriptions or labor for employees or contractors. If you have a physical location, it might include mortgage or rent. It might include utilities or your alarm. And so your income in the simplest form is what money comes in from goods and services that you sell. There could definitely be other income such as uh, interest income or uh, affiliate if you if you do affiliate uh, services, you could have affiliate income as well. But as far as what we're going to focus on, we're going to focus mostly on what comes from sales. So a budget is a plan of all of these items going in and out of your business that you use as a business owner, as a guideline to run your business, okay? How is the forecast different? The forecast is based on the budget. However, it includes projections on current business trends and your specific past data. To have a solid forecast, you do have to start with a solid budget. So the data is where you start, okay? 
you might be thinking right now, oh, data makes my head hurt, or I'm not a numbers person. You aren't alone, but I'm going to use a cliche here. There's no time like the present. So before we go any further, I want to mention to you that I have a workshop on January 25th. It's via Zoom. I think at four o'clock, we'll make sure that the link is in the show notes so that you can get to it. It is called Unleash Success in 90 Minutes, Your Blueprint for Sales and Marketing, where you can learn how to create your own budget, forecast, and connect those to your sales and marketing activities. Now, let's talk a little bit more about how a budget can serve as a guide for you in running your business. So tracking your income and expenses is easy in QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop. I'm a fan of online since we're an all virtual company. Zero, which is X-E-R-O, or even a Google or Excel spreadsheet if you need to. So I'm not a I'm not advocating for any of these specific products, but I do think that as a business owner, when you get to a certain level in your business and you have a certain number of tra- transactions, it's really good to use a bookkeeping keeping system like QuickBooks or Zero. And they aren't the only ones out there. I think there's something called Peachtree and some of them are very industry specific. So there's, I, I know Clio in the... Um, um, law industry, that's one that can be used as well. So there are a bunch of different types of, of software. You even have in some of your all-in-ones, I think HoneyBook is one of them, has you know your CRM, your sales thing, your email management system, and bookkeeping and invoicing. So hey, there there is a way, there are several systems. So again, not advocating for any specific one. But here's the thing about having a very specific bookkeeping system, it makes it much easier to pull reports. Okay. So I advocate for using one, not a specific one. It makes reports really easy to use. Okay. So the the reports that you pull help you review your budget. Is it is what your actuals are they looking like what you have put into your budget, what you expect, okay? Um, it also, using a software also allows you to group together expenses in categories such as entertainment or office supplies or payroll. And in some cases, some of these categories such as meals and entertainment may not be fully deductible, okay? Check with your tax professional about that. But having them broken out in this software can help your tax preparer, your accountant, uh, your CPA do your tax returns more accurately and keep you within the law should you get audited. You know, you don't want to have a full deduction on something that says, oh, you can only deduct a certain percentage of that by law. Okay. A budget can also help you determine cash flow, and that helps you see when is it the right time to hire a person or make a, that next big purchase. A forecast can do that also, but you have to keep in mind that a forecast includes projections of sales to help you see what income is likely available. And I know that is going to make some of you extraordinarily uneasy, especially if you follow that philosophy that if it's not in the bank, don't use it. Been there, done that. I (laughs) used to run my business by looking at the bank account and just saying, hey, the money's there or it's not. Um, It's sage advice to not spend money before it's in your hand, okay? However, if your budget and forecasts are built on your past performance data, if they're built on really solid data and realistic goals for the future, this is a great way for planning for things like new equipment or new staff. Now, notice I said planning, not necessarily specifically spending. There's a reason. We're going to come back to that. I think it'd be prudent to mention here that neither of these tools are set it and forget it. You have to look at your budget and forecast regularly, and I recommend monthly, and adjust based on the actuals, okay? So you create this forecast, which is a prediction or um, projection, okay? Prediction or projection. Some of it is definitely uncertain. However, you're tasked with monitoring it on a regular basis compared to what the actual performance is. If you're ahead of your goals, then 
set aside some money for those big projects or emergency expenses. So I know in my company, having I have a money market account that has a monthly sweep of a small amount. It goes into it automatically. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to do it. It's set up to do it, okay? And what that is used for primarily is there are times specifically around holidays where I create invoices because my invoice cycle and my payroll cycle are a mirror each other. So there are times when the invoice cycle, because of a holiday, the money doesn't get deposited quite in time for the payroll when the payroll comes off. It usually winds up being off by literally a day. And so when I discovered this and realized, wow, this is really happening, and it happens very specifically around the holidays, I set up this money market account to help combat that. And I also operate with a lot more cushion in the bank account now, and whereas in the past, I did not. It was very like, look in the bank account. Is the money there? Yes. If not, panic. Okay. We want to get you to a point where you're planning enough that you don't have to look at the bank account and panic. Okay. So that's one of the ways you can use your budget, okay? But keep in mind, if you're ahead, set aside some money for the things you may need in the future, as well as an emergency expenses. Now, if you're not hitting your goals, assessing it monthly can help you streamline. And there's a lot of different ways that you can streamline, okay? Be careful not to get into the deficit mindset, like I have to cut, cut, cut. I've been there before. We've done that. That isn't the best thing for your business. But just be wise about, okay, are there expenses you could do without? Look at your tech stack. Is there something that you combine can combine? we working with a client right now who we're setting up some things in our HubSpot, but she was also using MailChimp. And I said, do you know that you can send your emails directly from HubSpot and get rid of MailChimp. So we actually found two subscriptions where she can totally get rid of because she has those in other platforms that she is using. So look at your tech stack. That could be a way to chip away at some of those expenses. Are there subscriptions that you are not using? Okay. Sometimes as business owners, we get going, we get moving, things are, you know, just We're focusing on other big things we've got going on in the company and our heads are down and we forget, you know, have you ever looked up in your personal expenses and then go, oh, I have a subscription to Netflix, Hulu, Disney, ESPN. Do I really need all those? And Peacock. Okay. So it's like, do I really need all those? Probably not. So looking at those and saying, okay, this is where I can cut those. All right. So it's really good to review what subscriptions you have when you're planning your budget, by the way. And then um, other ways to say, so one of the things that we did, my company did in 2020, as my executive assistant firm was growing and we all of a sudden started hitting 15, 16 employees, we were on Toggle. Love the Toggle platform. However, Once you hit that a number of employees, they start charging you per employee per month. We switched over to Clockify. Clockify does the exact same thing, has the exact same reports. There might be a tiny bit of functionality that's different, but it definitely serves our need. And it's free no matter how many people you have on the plan. So it saved us about $200 a month. And when you're looking at ways to cut expenses, hey, I will take that $200 a month. That's $2,400 annually. So look at those things if you are not hitting your goals. Now, I want to talk a a tiny bit more about the forecast. What are some pitfalls of forecasts? As I've said before, forecasts include projections or predictions. That means there's a certain amount of uh, uncertainty there, okay? And it's essential to be aware of the limitations of what those predict projections are. This makes this used to make me extraordinarily uncomfortable. It does not make me as uncomfortable now. Okay. Here's the reason why. With a forecast, just like a budget, you need to assess, reassess, and then adjust accordingly based on how conditions evolve. With your forecast, the conditions may be related to industry trends, something that's going on. So as of you know, late, there's still a lot of talk about economy. Are we in for a soft landing or not? Who knows? I don't know. But 
at the beginning of 2023, I fully thought we were headed for a recession. And I was kind of buckling down, you know, trying to chip away at some expenses and create some some expandability in my credit. So there were things that I was preparing for based on the thought that there was going to be a recession. Now, to give you an example of a couple of well-known brands, Apple and Samsung in third quarter of last year, 2023, they both lost global market share to a largely unknown brand. Do you know why? This unknown brand used a very specific tactic for sales, okay? It's called Transon, T-R-A-N-S-S-I-O-N. They claimed fifth place in the worldwide spot of smartphones sold by increasing their global market share from 6% to 9%. And while that may not sound like a lot, it's a 50% increase, 50%. Imagine if you increased your business by 50%. That would feel pretty good, what in it? So how'd they do it? They, they deployed a plan that took away from Apple and Samsung. They focused on the continent of Africa and customizing their phones to meet those end users. And then they also created a very friendly entry point of $600 per smartphone. Now think about it. What do you pay for your smartphone? I think mine was, my last one was between 1200 and 1800. I don't really remember. They're basically mini computers. Okay. So $600 versus 1200, that's 50% less. Or if it was 1800, and like I said, I don't remember, that's 67% less. Okay. So being aware of trends like this that are relative to your industry can also help you fine tune your forecast and make sure that you're staying within budget. Now, your forecast is based on past data and performance. It is not at all a crystal ball or a way for you to jump into the million dollar club with no basis for the forecast. So I want you to keep that in mind. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reiterate that I'm doing this webinar on January 25th. I hope you can join me. This is a huge topic and extremely important for, well, all business owners, but particularly at the beginning of the year where we're thinking about it and we're creating our goals. We want to make sure that you're successful, that we're helping, that I'm helping you create goals that are attainable and realistic, but also that are growing your company the way you want to grow it. So this is Denise, and I appreciate you stopping by for another episode of Denise's opinions. I hope to see you on January 25th. Thank you for joining me for today's Nurture Small Business podcast, where the focus is on business growth through technology, leadership, and people strategies. Do you have an idea for a podcast or feedback you'd like to share with me? Send me a note through my website at dcavirtual.com slash contact.